first off, I want to start off by saying, Hi, Mom! <laughs> now that I got that out of the way, we're here at Channel 12 News Station. KEYC Television Mankato, the one to watch. Let's go inside and see what's going on. I wonder how many channels they get with these satellite dishes. This is Evan Bush reporting for KGFW, and this is... I'm Ryan Carmel, a weather guy here at KEYC Television here in Mankato. And can you tell us about the green screen? Absolutely. The green screen is actually called a chroma key technology. And what that is, is it actually takes a color and manipulates the color and turns any given color into a graphic. And for our purpose, we use the color green. So any anytime there's green behind me, it will actually show up as a graphic, any graphic that is supplied to the camera. And we can change the color. It could be a blue color. It could be a green color. And actually, if I if you guys want to hand me that, that green sheet over there, you, I can kind of demonstrate exactly how this works. As you can see, any kind of green, like if I were wearing the color green, I would actually disappear. Can you see, if you look in the monitors here on the right and left, oh, you can see how I've, I'm disappearing. So I have to be careful as to what I wear. Like I wouldn't want to wear a green tie because, well, that would look kind of goofy. And on Halloween, they do some weird things like they'll, they'll cover their heads like this. It kind of, so you can just see my head floating around like this. So, yeah, it can be anything. And we used to have blue, and that was kind of tricky because I like to wear blue. And every once in a while, they'd say, oh, you got to go change your tie because your tie is disappearing. I tried to disappear Absolutely. once. Absolutely. All right, here, I'll hold your microphone, and I'll give you the green sheet. What do you think about that? And, yeah, maybe you could poke your head out. All right. Cool, huh? Thanks a lot, Ryan. You're welcome. Hello, my name's Tyler Levo, reporting for KGFW, and we're going to see how a camera works. Could you tell us about this camera, Ryan? Absolutely. These cameras are a lot bigger than maybe a traditional camcorder that you might have at your house. And this one actually has a large television screen on it, about a 13-inch screen. And what it is able to do is actually, it serves several purposes. One is it can turn into a teleprompter, which actually shows the words that a newscaster would read or a weather person would read. And then it can also show video, which is basically like these screens over here where I can see myself and I can see the weather graphics. I can, I can also look in, into this camera and see the very same thing. And then they can also make it show exactly what's going on the news as well. It serves a few different purposes more than just a regular camera does. My name is Elizabeth Sullivan, reporting for KGFW, and today we're here with Elizabeth Colosimo. Um, so, how do how does it feel to be a report? Well, Elizabeth, it's it feels great. It's such a great job because you're always doing something new every day because we're always covering a new story we're always meeting new people and it seems like it's something that you really never get bored with who is your role model in, a, in elementary school my role model in elementary school I was probably my dad because I, I definitely looked up to him and he was always there for me and I always wanted to be like him someday be successful and um, give back to the community if I ever was successful. Um, do you like to read? I love to read, yeah. Do you have any favorite books? My favorite book uh, is The Great Gatsby, but I like to read anything that's out there. And I always stay up on reading. It's, it's very important when you're a reporter. What has been one of the biggest highlights of, of your career? Well, let's see, one of the biggest highlights, well, since I just started, I really haven't been able to cover too much, but I guess, um, I guess just being able to um, be the noon anchor, that's probably one of the highlights that I got, um, one of the newest things that's happened to me, and I, I really am excited. Cool. Um, how is Minnesota different from Chicago? Well, it's a little colder. The people are definitely a lot nicer. 
and um, let's see there's not as much traffic and pollution and there's a lot more farms and it's uh, I think it's a nicer place to to grow up <laughs> how is your tennis going it's going very well Elizabeth how'd you know I play tennis <laughs> It's on the internet. It's going very well. I've been playing in a league, and um, it's something that I like to do to uh, sort of pass the time and to have fun with. Cool. Do you have a Do you have a favorite baseball team? I do, Elizabeth. But I'm afraid if I say it, I'll make some enemies here because my favorite baseball team is the Chicago White Sox. They're a good rival of the Minnesota Twins. They are, and I hope this year that they'll do better than the Minnesota Twins. <laughs> Well, we'll see about that. <laughs> Thanks for the interview, Elizabeth. We're going to check out more of the studio. Thank you, Elizabeth. <laughs> this is Eve Blake reporting for KGFW, and we're going to check out the Weather Center. And here, this is where I gather all the information for the weather for every day so I can get a good idea of how warm it's going to get and how cold it's going to get at night and whether there's any rain, snow, or sleet, when it's going to get here, where it is, how heavy it's falling, and when it's going to leave. All that's done from right here. This weather center is a vital part to getting the severe weather information out to, to viewers that watch us every day. Are you ever nervous in front of the camera? I used to be when I first started doing the weather. I was nervous because there's no script. You just have to go out there and look in the camera and know that there's thousands of people watching you. Yeah, at first I was kind of nervous about it. Now it's not a big deal. Now it's kind of just like I'm talking to you guys. It's not a big deal and I don't really think about all the people that are watching. When you were growing up, what made you want to go into television? Oh man, I just ever since I was probably in kindergarten, I just I always I always watched the news. I didn't watch too many cartoons. I just watched the news and found it so interesting that that these people were able to to, to be so involved with what goes on and and be able to show people I think is is really really neat. Thank you very much, Ryan. Okay, I have another question. How come it's such a big time difference when like a, um, a person's in Washington and you're in the news station and it takes such a long time for the other person you ask them a question and it takes a long time for them to answer oh yeah the, especially it's kind of it seems like the further the person is away the longer it takes and I know that's definitely the case sometimes in international stories when they're talking to somebody over a satellite like halfway across the world and it just takes I mean satellites are in almost instantaneous but there's just a slight delay and the further you are away especially like halfway around the world it takes sometimes a half a second or a second for that signal to come across bounce up off another satellite and then bounce back down to the other place halfway across the world um are you ta the things like the going to ears are they like the ones in the football and ba baseball games yeah pretty similar basically we have a thing called an IFB and it fits perfectly in everyone's ear they actually make them custom made because everybody's ear is a little bit different so I have one that fits perfectly in my ear and they'll tell me things like to hurry up get done go to commercial you're too slow or or just stuff like that, that that they might normally not be able to tell me because it would kind of be obnoxious for them to just yell it at me when we were doing the weather or something like that so just little technical things they'll tell me in my ears sometimes and sometimes they're not even used at all and what I hear when they're not being used is I actually hear myself and anything that's going out over the news so I hear exactly what the viewers are hearing at home in my ear. The Iraq war and stuff when you saw a lot of coverage you probably heard that quite a bit yeah. Why is this the coolest part of your job? The coolest part of my job is to be on live TV. I think that is the most fun, being able to come and talk about the weather and talk about stuff that's going on outside and not have a script and just kind of talk just about everything that's happening. I really I just love live TV because anything can happen, whether it be a mistake or a funny surprise or maybe a, maybe the anchor will say something to me that I'm not expecting it, it'll throw me off guard. I think that stuff is just really fun. I got another question. Who was a role model when you were growing up or still is? 
I would say both of my parents. They encouraged me to do whatever I wanted to do, and I wanted to, to get into this, what some people might call a goofy, goofy profession, but I did it anyway, and I, and I love it, and my parents have always encouraged me to, to, do what I, to do what I want to do with my life, and I'm doing it. We are the KGFW crew, and we're, we just want to say thanks to Ryan for giving us the tour today. Thanks a lot, Ryan. Would there be anything you want to tell us? No, that's about it. You know, you guys are welcome to come anytime, and we had a lot of fun with you guys today. So did we. All right. Hi. All right. Hi, Mom. Hello, this is Mackenzie Dyer, and we're going to the Kids Against Hunger Food Packaging event here pretty soon. All right, we've arrived at the Winthrop VFW. Let's go on in and see what's going on. Hi, and this is Yvonne O'Brien, and we're uh, recording from Kids Against Hunger in Winthrop, Minnesota. Could you tell us what's going on here today? Well, we're having a wonderful time this afternoon, and we're packing food for children around the world. Some of the children from the Tsunami region will be getting this food. Some of the children in the United States will also be getting the food. And anywhere else where there are children that are hungry, this food will be sent. So the people in Winthrop and the surrounding communities that are here are helping children all over the world. There sure are a lot of people here. Where are they all from? Well, I really don't know where they're from. They're from uh, maybe the Gibbon area. They're from the Lafayette area. There are people coming in from the Arlington area. Um, I don't know, Brownton, um, all over. All right, Yvonne, where are we at now? Well, right now we're setting up some packaging. And as you can see, we've got, um, we've got uh, Girl Scouts that are packaging and um, uh, some other people from the community. And uh, in just a minute, I'm going to try to introduce you to John Neeson. Um, who is the man behind this whole project. Okay, now we're here with the organizer here. Hi, how you doing today? Could you tell us a little bit of what's going on here? Uh, yeah, we're uh, packaging food for uh, needy children in third world countries uh, all over the world. How many people do you estimate are helping you? Uh, it looks like a lot. I would say uh, <laughs> there must be uh, uh, between two and three hundred, I would guess, just by the looks of it. Where do all these meals go to? We are going to ship um, over a million meals to uh, the survivors of the tsunami. In addition to that, we're going to ship to a lot of countries. We have shipped to uh, maybe uh, eight or ten countries. We've shipped to Honduras, Uganda, Malawi, Haiti, Guatemala. Uh, Kosovo and Romania. How did this uh, all start? Uh, I went down to uh, New Hope, Minnesota where uh, I saw the organization. It was the Kids Against Hunger organization down there and uh, was really liked it and decided to set up a mobile packaging satellite of the Kids Against Hunger. How many stations are there here and what do they all do? Okay, we have, uh, I don't know how many stations, maybe 14 or 15 stations. They're adding in um, uh, a mixture of rice and soy for the protein, and there's 21 vitamins and minerals, and there's seven vegetables. It makes a um, very nutritious uh, hot dish. Um, one bag will feed six children, and it has a long shelf life. It has like a three-year shelf life. So it's really designed for shipping all over the world. Are there any other things you'd like to share with us? Um, one of the things that sometimes is overlooked, in, um, but it's also very important, if people also would, could help with the um, donations, financial donations, to help pay for all this stuff. And um, if uh, anybody is interested in donating, please uh, uh, contact some of these people for uh, if they would like to contribute financially. It'd be of uh, uh, it is of great importance and certainly appreciated and needed. Do you have a website? Yes, we do. The website is www.feedingchildrenstewart.org. Thank you for being on our show, and we'll catch up with you later. Well, thank you for uh, inviting me to be on your show. Now we're interviewing Emily. Emily, you used to be in KGFW, weren't you? Yes, I was. What episode were you in? Episode 6. What are some of the things you got to do? 
Um, I got to work the camera, and I got to interview some of the softball players at the twin, the twins fest. Yeah. Can you tell us about your station? Yeah, we're packing um, food into boxes to be sent off to other countries for Kids Against Hunger. Sure, are a lot of people here. Yeah, they all want to help out. Where do they go from your table? Um, from here, out, and there, into the truck. Thanks a lot for the interview, and we'll talk to you another time. Thank you for interviewing me. How many boxes do you guys think you already packed up? 1,200,489,842.5. Yeah, 0.5. Point five. That one's still under construction right now. Yeah, 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 we have this down. So. Well, yeah. Here with another volunteer, and your name is? My name is Orville Tretton. Can you tell us about the Kids Against Hunger program? The Kids Against Hunger program, uh, the Stuart Satellite started two years ago. And so far we have bagged 3,500,000 meals. That's a lot. <laughs> What's one of your favorite parts about this event? All these wild people that we see out here ba uh, bagging and weighing and sealing and, and boxing because we know there are hungry people in this world and they're ha sure helping a lot. Is there anything else you'd like to share with us? We have shipped over, over one million meals to the Nasami disaster uh, that happened uh, December 26th. One million meals have gone there to feed hungry people. That's a lot. What are you doing here today, Connor? Um, I'm uh, helping um, filling the, the bags with food, and I just got done with that. Now I'm going to carry baskets over to that table over there. What's your name? Jackie Thorson. Hey, you were in KDFW too, weren't you? Yes. What are you doing here today? I'm helping kids against hunger. What are you doing today? Putting stuff in a bag. Aren't you excited you're going to be interviewed on TV? Cool. What are you doing today? Having a Girl Scout meeting, going, putting rice into the pails. Is it hard work? No, it's easy. You're sure helping a lot of people. Do you know that? Yes. Could you tell us what these trucks are? Uh, these trucks are, are for hauling all of the raw ingredients to the packaging. We haul uh, rice and soy. In those barrels there is uh, the vitamins and there's bags of vegetables and bags of rice and tubs of soy and bags of soy. That's a lot of stuff. This is a really big event. Indeed it is and a very important event. And and I'm sure glad everybody came. We're here with a couple of volunteers. What's your name? Sandy Pearson. Keith Hartman. Kelly Pearson. What do you guys like about this event? Well, I feel very fulfilled after the, the end of the day. I'm very tired, but I feel it's a good cause. Same thing. It's going to very good places and people who need it. Where'd you get the meal? Inside. Everybody takes a break during the time that they're here. They get a free meal, hot dog, or barbecue and a couple of cookies. Chips and beans. And pickles and Kool-Aid. <laughs> Our interview. Dustin Ricky. Can you tell us a little bit about what your involvement is in this? Uh, I started as my Eagle Scout project last year. Um, I uh, went to different organizations and asked for money and eventually we uh, packaged for the first time last year. It was in March. I don't remember the date exactly. It really has turned into, into quite the event, huh? Yeah, um, last year we didn't have as many people as this year. There's a lot of people this year. I hope this is something you can really be proud of. Oh, it is. It's been such a success. Um, it feels great that I'm helping other kids. Tell us the process that goes on here. Well, first of all, we uh, put the food in the buckets and then the people package them by uh, getting in a circle and they each individually put in the soy, the vegetables, the chicken fat and vitamins and the rice. And then that is sent to the scales which they uh, weigh it so it's an exact amount. And then after that they seal it and then they box it and then it gets shipped out to the hungry kids. And what do you think about all this? It's just amazing that how all the Every, if everybody works together, how many meals they can get to all the people in hunger. When everybody works together like this, that's called community. 
I definitely agree. Come on, thanks for, uh, thanks for having us here today, and is there anything else you want to tell us? Well, I just want to thank you for coming. You've been just a wonderful group of students to come down here today, and I'm impressed with your knowledge uh, of TV and, and all the things you know how to do. Thank you very much, and we'll look forward to seeing you next year. You're very welcome, and we look forward to seeing all of you uh, next year, too. And again, thank you to KGFW. You've been wonderful. This is Mackenzie Dyer signing off. Hi, I'm Cassie Sloop for reporting for KGFW, and we're here at the Grackle Days Breakfast. Can I ask you what you're having for breakfast? Pancakes, sausage, and eggs. You know Mr. Warner? Uh, I think so. That's my oldest grandson. <laughs> I know that guy. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. I'm Emily Bankston, reporting for KGFW, and I'm going to be helping Cassidy Sloot. Let's go see what some more people are having for breakfast. Pancakes and eggs. That sounds good. What are you cooking back here? Pancakes back here. Thanks for coming. What's your favorite part about Grackle Day? Um, the magic show. And you? Everything. Was it fun to get up this early? Yeah. Wasn't it for you? How has the past year been for you guys? Great. It went by really fast. <laughs> What's your favorite memory from Grackle Day? Probably the magic show. All the good food. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Yeah, thank you. Can I your name? Hi, I'm Doug Hansen. And what are you doing here? I am representing the Winthrop Area Chamber of Commerce today. What kind of things do you have here on the table? Oh, we have a lot of free giveaway items like magnets and our brochures, and we have door prizes from different businesses. Uh, we're trying to sell our Graco buttons, and I love the Winthrop buttons, as well as some caps, cups, and shirts. Man, you got all kinds of things. Uh, yes, we do. We're, we, uh, some of them are a collection from uh, past Grackle days and a few new things. We try to do a couple new things each year. What's your favorite item? The shirt. It's such a good golf shirt. I get to go golfing in it. Thank you. You're welcome. Let's sign up for some of these prizes. <laughs> Cassie, you know what? We could put a weed eater. Cool. <laughs> What's your booth called? It's Gold Country Seeds. Tell us a little bit about your product. Well, we offer corn, soybeans, and alfalfa. What's your boots about? FFA. What's your favorite part of, about FFA? Um, I like to go to all the different camps and to meet a lot of new people and to have fun with agriculture. Hey, I know you. Hi, good morning. How are you? Good. Good. Are you guys having fun? Yeah. Can you tell me a little bit about your booth? Well, we're just handing out some materials on public safety. Um, we have seatbelt information because we feel it's very important that people buckle up and be safe. We're handing out just some click it or ticket things and um, bike safety. It's almost that time of year. Thanks, Officer Johnson. Thank you. Have a good day. Can you tell us a little bit about your booth? Well, it's just a picture of some of the major fires we had in the town of Winthrop between the Tim Super Value and the Winthrop Elevator. Picture of our equipment that we presently use. Could you tell us about your booth? Well, basically I'm here with Sibley County Faith in Action. We're a non-profit, non-professional caregiving service that's uh, free to the people of Sibley County uh, to take care of uh, many of the needs uh, that they need met, whether it's uh, respite or transportation to appointments or lawn care or snow shoveling. We're open to almost any type of help the people of Sibley County need. Thank you. I'm Emily Bankston reporting for KGFW and this is... This is Leroy Floor here from New Alam. Can you tell us a little bit about your instrument? This is a concertina here. It's 104 key, you know. And it's built in 1936. <laughs> is that really hard to play? Not that bad. Uh -uh. It takes a little while. But it's, oh, it's not that bad. Uh -uh. Thank you much. <laughs> Can you tell me a little about your little bit about your booth? Yeah, uh, we're United Farmers Co-op and we're uh, an agricultural company that uh, sells everything from agronomy to feed. Been a long time business in the Winthrop area. Thank you. Have a good day. 
Could you tell us a little bit about your booth? We're the Winthrop uh, Hist Community Historical Society. And um, we're trying to put an, a sign out by um, where the old post office was, where Eagle City used to be. Evan, you're in KDFW. You want to tell us about this next booth? Um, this booth is for Franklin Telephone Company. We're doing a drawing for a $10 certificate for at the telephone company and we got some free candy over here if you want some and then I think my dad will do the rest here. Could you tell us a little more about your booth? Oh, I'd be happy to and thanks to KGFW for coming to the Ag Day here at, at Grackle Days. Uh, we're from Winthrop Telephone Company. My name is Danny Bush and alongside of me is my son Evan and we're talking about some of our high-speed internet products today. We uh, have a, a great special for this spring. If you want to hook up high-speed internet at home, we've got a uh, free installation for our internet. We also have some new directories out here and some fun gifts for anybody that'd like to stop by. Thank you. Thank you very much. Could you tell us a little bit about your booth? Sure. We're here today at Breakfast on the Farm and we're checking blood pressures for people. This is Emily Bankston reporting live for KGFW and this is Carol Polk. Can you tell us about your booth? This is the Sibley County Relay for Life. We are having our 10th annual Relay for Life at the Sibley County Fairgrounds on June 10th and 11th, and we, where we honor the survivors and we honor the uh, deceased from cancer. And please come and enjoy us. Looks like a wonderful event. Thank you. My name is Karen Klink, and I'm here representing the Winthrop Alumni Association and we're selling some history books here of the Winthrop community. A little bit of uh, the history about Winthrop. And we have some cookbooks and a lot of things here that we want people to buy. Thank you for the interview. You're welcome. Can you tell us about the Sibley County Dairy Association? Not too much. I don't know much about cows. They got standing four legs and they milk and it's white and they make cheese and butter and what else, ice cream. Uh, I don't know too much about them. All the good stuff? All the good stuff. Thank you. You're welcome. This is Kelly Sloot. What's your favorite part about Crackle Day? Well, there's lots of good food to eat all weekend. Of course, my favorite part is the breakfast because I have a lot to do with that along with the rest of my committee members. Why do you think the Crackles come to Winthrop? Well, I think they come because Winthrop's a really fun place and of course they come for the food too, I think. Are you surprised to see all these people here this morning? Well, I'm not really surprised. It's a great turnout. I'm really happy that we have so many people. You know, they say the early bird gets the worm, so everybody's up early today. Thanks, Mom. You're welcome. Have a good day. This is Cassie Sloon. We're here at the Miss Winthrop pageant. Let's check out the show. Miss Winthrop pageant. Now we're going to go talk to some royalty. What was it like standing on stage in front of all those people? It was really nervous. I was so nervous and I just, I was scared to be out there but it was so much fun. Why do you, why did you, you want to be Miss Winthrop? Um, I just love this community and I love all the people in it and I think it would have been fun to represent the town. What do you guys love about Winthrop? Um, the community and all the people in there. Me too, but I really like Dairy Queen because I love ice cream. <laughs> um, it's small enough for you know everybody. You know what I like too? I like it that we get to be interviewed by you guys. That's pretty awesome. <laughs> we need your autographs before you leave. Okay, no problem. Are you happy about your sister being first princess? Yeah! Are you sure? I don't know. <laughs> well,
Congratulations. I can tell he's happy. I'm Emily Banks, and I'm Cassidy Sloot, and we're signing off. This, this morning we here at uh, KEYC, we've we been have. entertaining a group from a GFW in Gibbon, the GFW Elementary School. We've got a group of kids that came in to tour the studios and shadow us a little bit yep. today. So we want to give them a chance to wave and and uh, be on TV today. And we've been uh, highly entertained by them <laughs> and we hope that uh, that uh, we've entertained them as well. And we hope <laughs> we entertain you as well. Thanks for joining us today. Join us back here for News 12 at 6. Have a great day.